howdy do, howdy do. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Come in, come in. I am Eve with the baby's booty. And this Sunday, we're going to chill out and have fun. Let's do a project. What do you think? Now, I talked to you guys about it, um, I think, last Sunday. And we discussed some ideas or some stuff that we could do tonight. Applique was one, but then a really cool project was another. So we'll talk on that, excuse me, a little bit more here shortly. But in the meantime and in between time, I want to welcome you to our channel. Here at the Baby's Booty, we discuss uh, embroidery, vinyl a little bit, then we do sublimation as well, rhinestones, we bling things around here. Whoops, can't hardly see it. We bling. So if you have any questions about any of those, just shoot it in the chat. We'll get to it shortly as we scroll through the chat and say hi to everyone. Um, and I also wanted to welcome each and every one of you. You have a couple of options here at the Hoop Group of how you can join in on the fun on a regular basis. You can join on our Facebook page, uh, The Baby's Booty, if you look it up that way, or I think it pulls up even under the Hoop Group. You can find us on Facebook or you can join here on YouTube and give some support to the channel as well. There is a link in the description below. It's our channel with slash join. You can click there and you can become a member here on the channel. Now, if you become a member, there's a lot of perks that come with it because I mean, it's a subscription uh, benefit membership. So you get some emojis. If some of y'all would throw in some of y'all's bell emojis or have some fun, with your emojis if you're a member um, and we also have other perks to go with it there's three levels you can choose to join and it's entirely up to you but no matter what level you join you will be qualified to get the bell y'all yeah! so our bell we ring whenever anyone gets a new baby and i already know of one baby that's in here that you know was snuck in on somebody because they talked about it in the hoop group so we definitely gonna ring the bell for that baby but we ring the bell for the new purchases that you get for your business because i mean it's an achievement to upgrade or to add things to your business people don't realize or even your crafting studio people don't realize our crafting is an art and our toys are not inexpensive so we like to celebrate with you because sometimes it's disappointing. You go and get something and you're super excited about it, but everybody else around you is like, okay, it's a machine. And mm -mm. here we going to cut up with you. So let us know if you got a new baby recently. You have to have it, not order it. When you get it, that's when we ring the bell for you. So if you join membership here on this channel, you can definitely qualify to get you a bell. Also, we have our own website, thebabiesbooty.com where you can go and we have a forum there as well. So meanwhile, one of the things I like to do here on this channel, because you guys, I wouldn't even have this channel had it not been for you all and your regular support. So I want to acknowledge the folks that have joined us thus far. And let me get my screen right so that I can see everybody. <laughs> so first, So Crafty and Andrea Ross is in here and both of them are... YouTube Hoop Group Captain. So I definitely want to say thank you so very much to the both of you for supporting our channel as members of the online on YouTube Hoop Group. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And she says, good evening. And Andrea says, good Sunday evening. <laughs> Dorothy Gaston is here from the STL. Hello, how are you? Betty Stetcher, hello. Hi, Sheila Cushionberry. Sheila Cushionberry is here. Uh, Heather is here from Australia. Welcome, Heather. How are you? Tanya is here as a captain as well. What's up to you? And thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. I appreciate it. Stampin' Sue Creates says, hello, everyone. Hello to you. Lila Nelson says, hi, even everybody. And she also is a YouTube Who Group member as well as American Eagle Embroidery and Graphics. Thank you to the both of you for being YouTube Who Group members. I appreciate it. <laughs> Heather says, hi. Oh, man, must be nice. We had warm weather, and it's been cooled off. So I was like, oh, man, I just came back from Walmart and had to wear a sweatshirt. So I was like, oh, y'all know how I am about this cold. Marianne Reddick, hello. How are you? Welcome. 
Leslie Ram and Leela Nelson. Hello to the both of you and thank you to the both of you for being YouTube Hoop Group members. I appreciate it. Uh, Andrea Baxter. Hello, Kelly. Hello, Margo McClure. Hello, Elaine. Hello, <laughs> Shirley Stewart. Hello, how are you? And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member as well. Olivia Garcia. Hello, Pamela. Hello from San Antonio. Welcome and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Uh, you gotta be kidding. <laughs> hello, how are you? Tricia Smith. Hello, hopefully I spelled that correctly. Welcome. Eartha Lewis from Port Allen, Louisiana. Hi, Miss Eartha Lewis. How are you? Welcome. Miss Becca. <laughs> Doing good today. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And you got any grandbabies with you? Let me know. What, what, Melissa, was that her name? I can't remember. I want to be sure to say hi. Nancy Fowles from Iowa. Hello, Joy. Hello. I'm good. How are you? Miss Linda. Hello. Excited to learn. Awesome sauce. That's what we're here for. So welcome, Lupe. Hey, Lupe and Simone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Miss Mary Stowell, thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I definitely appreciate the support. Will Allen, hello. How are you from Durham? <laughs> Dorothy says, great. Let's do a project. Awesome. Nick Nick Nurse. Hey, girl. How are you? Welcome. El Latore, hello. How are you? Isabel, hello. How are you? Good evening to you as well. Avery Head, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I appreciate that. Uh, Joy says, bling. Uh-oh. No bling today. We're not doing bling today. Today, we're doing embroidery, but we can always join back in on some bling soon. Tree C, hello. Missed you started a new job. Uh-oh. Congratulations on the new job. Make that paper, girl. Make that paper. And thank you for hanging out for as long as you possibly can. I appreciate that. So, so on. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Welcome. Joy says she's looking into starting to do bling items. That's cool. So if you have questions, you can feel free to drop them in the comments. I don't have any issues answering your questions. Um, Kelly Sherrod says you need so what pro help. Uh oh, let me know what's going on so that we can um, touch on that and see what's going on. Now, I know there's been some there was an update that dropped today. Um, and they suggested if you're having like technical glitches or something like that to uninstall it and then re, <clears throat> excuse me, download it from, don't use Google Chrome, use any other browser other than Google Chrome to re-download the software, reinstall the software and it should fix the problems that if you're having a technical issue that may be. Um, something, but if you're not having technical issues, no worries. Just drop your com your question in the uh, comments. Um, Karen Murray from Canada, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening, and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Norma says she's here from Miami. Hey, Miss Norma, sorry, I drew a blank. Hey, Miss Norma, how are you? <laughs> welcome. Thank you for joining us. Lysandra says hello, new on live. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Just FYI, I have a new baby. Baby Lock Flourish 2. Upgraded from the SE400, but I'm keeping her. <laughs> I want to learn bling as well. Well, guess what that means? Time to ring the bell. So congratulations to you for your new Baby Lock Flourish 2. Holla! <laughs> new baby in the house. Holla! <laughs> That's what's up. We like to do babies around here, don't we? Uh, we, uh, have another one. I'm waiting to see when that baby is going to pop up in my timeline. <laughs> um, let's see what we've got. Shonda says, hello. I've been tardy to the party lately. Arkansas checking in. Welcome, Shonda. There's no worries. We always happy to have you here just by being, yo, hello, Pearl Lucas. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Miss Pearl Lucas got some bling. Hopefully she's been blinging too. Tanya says she got the new Epson 4700 ET for sublimation. That's a nice printer, girl. Congratulations on your new baby. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, Tanyu. That's what's up, girl. Look, make sure you post it in projects so that we can see all the cool stuff you sublimate because I'm excited. As a matter of fact, I am jumping on the learning pillow bandwagon. I don't know if any of you guys have heard about the learning pillow that's something really cool for sublimation. Matter of fact, Ms. Bickham, I think you would absolutely love this for your grandbabies. 
Um, but it's really cool. I'm super excited. I have the design laid out in Photoshop, Photoshop, print shop, Photoshop, whatever the Adobe thing is. And I need to print it out and press it, but I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. But I already have the design, so I'm super excited, super excited. Um, let's see. Pamela says, I found the bell at last. Oh, sweet. Yes. Okay. You did ask about that last time. Uh, Laura's Lace Fabrics. Hello. How are you? Welcome. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. I really appreciate it. And Dr. Threads. Hey, Dr. Threads. How are you, my dear? Welcome. And she says, hey, getting snow to ball. And you're excited and happy. <laughs> but you're up north way, so I understand. But you enjoy your snow, ma'am. I'm not 100% ready for that just yet. <laughs> but if it comes, I'm not going to be too terribly mad. Miss Ethel Smith, hello. How are you? Welcome. And thank you very much for being a YouTube Who Group captain. I appreciate it. Johanna, hello. Welcome. Siobhan Miller, welcome from the Bahamas. That's what's up. Yvonne Hudson from California, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Scooby-Doo, yes. Wait a minute. You re-injured it? Oh, no. Oh, man. Will you get better? Heal up because back pain is not fun. So we will miss you tonight. But thank you for popping in to say hi. I really appreciate it. Get get well soon. Okay. Um, Michelle Kendall from Philadelphia. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Karen Smith. Hello to you. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, the Sewing Brat says, hey, everybody. Question jump stitches. Oh, the dreaded jump stitches. Do I have to sit with my machine and cut every string? Or can I just let the machine run until the design finishes? I'm still new. What I generally do is let the machine run its course, do its own thing. Because if you stand over it and do all of your jump stitch cutting, it can get annoying. And you're standing over the machine instead of doing something else, so to speak. But it's entirely up to you. That's how I do it. And then make sure you got you some really awesome jump stitch scissors like these are really cool that i get from um i got these from tex mac these are my absolute favorite jump stitch scissors to cut i buy them all the time because once you drop them it'll dent the tip so i and i drop them on this tile floor and dent up my tip so i have to keep buying them they're not super inexpensive they're like 12 bucks for these little but they're awesome scissors um, and then there's also the little squeezy scissors that you can buy to cut jump stitches too. Let's see. Uh, do I have? Yep. So this is like my scissor cutting bowl. So I have all of my little jump stitch and quick trim scissors in here. So these scissors are also good for jump stitches because you just squeeze it and it trims. These are good as well. I absolutely love those too, but they're not my favorite. The gold ones are. And of course, some of the sewing machines or embroidery machines actually come with scissors that you can cut for jump stitches. Um, and then there's also nippers that you can get from time to time. These you can even find in Hobby Lobby, the little nippers. So there's a couple of options that you have available to you. Um, all stitch, A L L S T I T C H, and I'll put it in the chat. They sell a lot of these scissors that you can get to help make cutting your jump stitches much easier and much cleaner. Um, but I generally wait until the end, but it's entirely up to you. If you don't mind sitting over the top of it, by all means, go right ahead. Um, but I choose not to. And I just put the link to all stitch in the comments below. Uh, walk by Faith from Texas. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Um, Heather Butler. Hello. And thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. I really appreciate it. Now, I want to definitely point out something. If you are in here and you're not 100% sure, okay, because I'm, I'm coming across this a, kind of frequently. If you are a member of the YouTube Who Group, you will have the little icon right beside your name and your name will show up as green, okay? So if your name or, yeah, it should show up as green. If your name doesn't show up as green and you don't have the little icon beside your name to show how long you've been a member, then 
you will have to uh, check online with YouTube and find out why it's not showing up as that, especially if you know you have a subscription going on. So definitely check into that. But that will show that you are the YouTube Hoop Group member. So if I don't say thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member and you feel like you are, check with YouTube on that because your name should show up as green and you should have the little icon besides your name. So I just definitely wanted to point that out um, so that there won't be any confusion on that. So, so creative from Alabama. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. I appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Um, Simone Warren. Hey, Miss Regina, how are you? You got your bell, right? <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Um, let's see, Miss Beckham. I'm unbelievably alone. Melissa is out with mom and dad. You know that Papa and brother are down for the night. Oh, well, you got time to yourself. That's what's up. <laughs> That's what's up. Well, I can't wait to show you guys the uh, pillow because the pillow is really cool. But I'll probably end up having to post that on Facebook because I know I'm not going to get to do that tonight. Kelly says, I never got a chance to do the Solar Pro class. When is the next class? I'm going to be the first to sign up. Um, I am actually um, looking to do that within the next... What is today? The 25th. So mid-November actually is the next one because I go on a uh, vacation our week we, we usually take a week off every year the first it's like the it starts on the 30th and it goes through the hold on let me look at my calendar y'all you know I, I'll draw a blank in a hot minute it starts on the 30th and it goes through the 6th so from the 30th to the 6th is one week um so next weekend I should be still here to do the live. Um, I'll have to see. I may be out of town and may have to do the live out of town. We'll check and see. But um, that whole week we take off. So I'm not going to be able to do the class then. So that's why we're looking at the following week of November. Eh, somewhere around the 10th, the 11th, somewhere roundabout. And we'll let you know more here shortly. But we definitely need to get that scheduled. And I know uh, if my BM is in here, she is going to pitch pit and lay me out, but it's okay. I don't mind getting laid out. Um, Carol Coleman. Hey, Carol Coleman. How are you? Welcome, my love. Thank you for joining us this evening. Lisa Adams from Grover, North Carolina, about 30 miles from Charlotte. Not far. Not far. Welcome. Howdy, neighbor. <laughs> Laura Dixon from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Welcome. Anita Peoples from Michigan. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. And LaQuisha L. from Charlotte. Hey, neighbor, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Lysandra Booker, you're welcome. Glenda Wallace from VA, welcome. Maria, hello. It's been a while since you last visited. No worries. We love having you here every time you come. LaRuth Anderson, you've heard and seen them. They are cute. They are adorable. I wish I had went on and made it. I really do so that I can show y'all, but I needed to go to Walmart instead. Uh, the Baby Shower Place, hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Alicia Williams, you're new, but well, welcome. Thank you for joining us from Newport News, Virginia. I plan to create Debbie, first time watching. Well, thank you. I appreciate you guys coming in for the first time. That's totally awesome um, having you all here. We tend to have an excellent time here, so thank you for joining us. <laughs> Be sure if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. No worries at all. Leslie Ram says you end up doing both, but beware of cutting while the machine is running. Oh, yeah, no, we, we don't mean to cut them while it's running. We mean like in the color stops, that's when you want to cut. Um, because as she pointed out, you don't want to get tangled with the needle with either your fingers or your scissors. Because if your scissors catch that needle, it will usually break or bend your needle and it could bend your presser foot. You don't want to, to do that because that will tear up your machine. If your finger gets caught, we don't want to talk about that because that's like, I'm, I'm real, it, I cringe every time I see those pictures that people put on Facebook, like, oh, it finally happened to me. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, <laughs> oh, that looks terrible. So yeah, don't get your fingers up because even I know one person, it went through the bone. So our embroidery machines are tough. When that needle comes down, it doesn't care what's up under it. It's going to start, it's going to go. So please be careful. Don't do it while the machine is running. 
Leslie Ram, thank you for pointing that out because I didn't think about that. Carmen Alvarado says, hello, Eve and everyone. Welcome. And thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. I appreciate it. She says, the mass business has started again. Kids are going back to school and my customers are needing full, more face masks. Yes, because even here, I've gotten more orders and I'm just like, oh, I'm tired of masks. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. I'm not going to complain. Alice Fige, or Fig, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Andrea Ross, that's the machine I was looking for. I was looking for that baby. <laughs> She purchased a Brother LB5000 4x4 Saturday <sighs> against her better judgment. <laughs> but we want to say congratulations to that new baby anyway. <laughs> congratulations, Andrea. That is awesome. And I I know y'all, it's crazy when we see a deal or when we see a baby, it's like sometimes you're like, oh, I got to get it. <laughs> And that's what she came across. Eddie Jr. What up, Eddie Jr.? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. <laughs> um, Andrew, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, Miss Bickham says, very pointed and sharp embroidery snips. The eyebrow scissors at the store will work well, but don't last forever. They do have a very fine point. Do not cut anything but threads with your snips. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point, because if you start cutting other things like fabric, which to me, these are kind of a little teeny um, to use. Oh, well, sometimes now there have been times I have messed up and used them for applique because they're just so they get so close and they're very, very sharp. But you really should have applique scissors for that. Speaking of which, where are my applique scissors? I need to look for those, especially if we're going to be doing applique today. Uh, what made you start embroidery? Um, I started embroidery because at the time there was a really good friend. Well, actually, let me back up. I really don't know why I bought the embroidery machine to begin with. It was a Black Friday deal. I thought I wanted to get back into sewing because at one point in time I used to sew. I made, um, many years ago, I used to make bags, like purses. I used to do window treatments, still do from time to time. Um, pillows, stuff like that, like items. I didn't do clothing. I've tried to do clothing and it just didn't work. <laughs> it was, that was tragic. Um, so when one year, I guess it's been about four years ago, three, four years ago now, I can't remember. Um, no, it was longer than that because the machine sat for a year, but I saw a embroidery machine on Black Friday deal on Walmart and have yet to see another one come across. But at any rate, it was on Black Friday sale, the PE 500, and I decided to get it for Black Friday, and I did, and was intimidated and just let it sit to the side. So I bought it thinking sewing more so than embroidery, but it was a straight embroidery machine, so I was going to try and do something new. Um, but after it sat for a year because I was intimidated and I finally decided to jump into it because a very good friend of our family was having a baby and she was the first girl in the family with some boys. And so I was like, oh man, it would be cute to make some little girl stuff with her name on it. Cause she had this cute little name, Ava. It was like three letters. I mean, how hard could that be? Right. So that's when I started getting into embroidery. Um, and looked it up and took the time because my first embroidery project was like some months before that. And I tried to do washcloths and didn't understand the concept of stabilizer and using stabilizer and, you know, the right thread, the right design. I, none of that. I didn't, I had no clue. Um, and it was, it was frustrating because I didn't know the right thing to do. And reading the manual at the time was like Greek or whatever. So later when she was about to have her baby, that's when I decided to go out online and see if there was any classes or something. I could not find any classes. The information on that machine was very limited on YouTube. There was very little guidance on how to do embroidery. Every, everything that I saw on YouTube for embroidery was for the bigger machines. It wasn't for the small machines. So that was disconcerting. But eventually I started putting two and two together and applying the bigger machine stuff to the little machine. And I was like, you know what? I don't want anybody else going through this. So started 
YouTube channel and showing people how to make stuff. So that's how I got into embroidery. <laughs> Pretty much. Michelle Rosencrans. Hello. I think I said hi earlier, but no worries. Thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member and welcome. Sharice Mims, welcome. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Um, Rita Young from Australia, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Hi, welcome, welcome. Um, Let's see. Simone, you haven't gotten it yet? Okay, maybe I'm mixing you up with somebody else, but I want to be sure this is the right uh, Renita, I think, wait a minute, Rita from Florida, because I have one that was supposed to be going out, um, let's see, Leslie Ram, you have scissors for paper and a pair for fabric and then a different pair for vinyl, yes, that's what you need to do, okay, so we've gone through a lot of the folks, Oh, Stampin' Sue Creates had that happen. Just wanted to get that one string and boom, trip to the ER right through the bone. Girl, giving me the EBGVs just thinking about it. Sandy Fitchum, welcome. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Your grandson is having a great conversation with us too. He's four months old. We'll tell him welcome. afro Colombian speak of the Lord. Hey, how are you? How long you been here? <laughs> welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Shirley Stewart says, I sold my finger with an industrial sewing machine many years ago. I still can remember the pain. It is absolutely no go. And see, that's why I'm trying not to hear it. And I hope none of you get around the machine when it's running. I tend to still do it, but I try really hard not to uh, because I I know I'm. it's inevitable. At some point, I'm going to get tagged and I'm trying really hard not to do that. Kathleen says, hi, I'm a newbie at embroidery. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining the embroidery life. But I have a question that's embroidery 101. No worries. But when you embroider on terry cloth, do you have to put stabilizer on back as well as water soluble on top? Kathleen, that the basic answer is yes, but you don't have to. It depends on the route you choose to take. Okay, so you can... In most instances, you should put water soluble on the top because what happens is the embroidery doesn't hold the pile, those fibers of that towel down. So once you embroider on it, it pokes through the embroidery and it just, it overshadows the embroidery and then you can't really see the embroidery very well. So that would mean to use something to hold that down well the reason why i say you may not have to is for two things number one there's a thing called a tack down stitch that um say for instance if you don't have embroidery software and you're looking to get embroidery software um or actually you can purchase tack down stitches from a couple of websites but you can get a tack down stitch that will lay those fibers down first and then you can embroider what you want over the top of it. And then you don't have to use the water soluble stabilizer. That's one option. Another option is like, for instance, if you're using a font like wording on the towel, if you use one that's bold enough with bold satin stitches, you don't really need to do the water soluble on top for that because the satin stitch has a tendency to lay that down, but it has to be bold letters and bold fonts okay because otherwise the little thin letters will get lost in the towel um, but what i suggest more than anything since you're new especially get a el cheapo um hand towel from walmart i think they're like a dollar and something um or even go to dollar tree in the kitchen section those towels with uh, not the microfiber ones but the ones that actually look like a towel get those and practice on them you can't go wrong. And the reason why I suggest towels for all newbies, new people who are just starting with embroidery, is because even if you mess up, it's no big deal. It's still a towel. You can use it to wash the car. You can use it to wipe the floor, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's a, it's a towel. And then if you don't get it right on one end of the towel, flip it around and do the other end of the towel. If you mess that up, use the middle. Try on the middle. You know, you can... It's flexible and you don't have to worry about wasting your money on buying a shirt that you're not going to wear because the embroidery is messed up. Use a towel. So that's what I generally suggest. But if you don't know for sure whether you have a tack down stitch, if you don't know for sure if your 
embroidery design is going to be dense enough to cover those fibers, then yes, use water soluble on the top. Okay. Um, I use stabilizer on the back too for towels. Yes, you definitely want to use it on the back. Um, because that's definitely a something you need to do. What did I just see? Sorry, Heather Butler says yes, put the stabilizer on top to keep the nap of the fabric down so it doesn't poke up through your embroidery. Right. So again, even if you don't have I wish I had a towel on me to show you the knockdown stitch, but I don't have one. I did just did a towel with y'all the other day, actually. I think. Yeah, I did a towel with y'all, and now I don't even know what I've done with it. Um, the state what stabilizer should be used to cover up the backing on your embroidery item so you don't see the threads. Joy, there's a couple of options for that as well, but there's one that's called uh y'all, what's the name of that stabilizer? It's they use it on baby onesies uh, because the to keep the back of the embroidery threads from um, rubbing the baby skin wrong. It's not soft skin. Tender touch. It's tender touch. So there's some stuff called tender touch that you can buy at uh, any of your sewing supply stores. And it's iron on. So you can use tender touch. There's also some iron on uh, interfacings that you could use possibly to cover up the back. Um, and there's iron on stabilizer. So there's a, a couple of things you can use. But if you do um, tender touch, it's very soft to go on the back of the embroidery. Um, trying to see something. So happy you did get inspired to do embroidery. Thank you. I definitely love it. Was the, and it ended up being therapy. It actually ended up being therapy for me eventually. So I'm very glad I did get into it. Contessa Harris, hello from Louisiana. Welcome. Uh, Frank Wonder, hi. Is this ask questions? You can ask questions. No worries. Um, hello, Deborah Bemlander. Thank you for joining us again. No worries. Thanks for being here. Do you have example of order forms or policies template on your Facebook channel? I'm trying to build my website and order forms. I don't. Um, it's not necessarily something bad that we can't do and add on to the Facebook page. So what we can do is uh, put the word out there because I don't have order forms myself. I use word of mouth and the customers that I have, I just do the order. I don't have a form. But I know we have several folks, as a matter of fact, several in here right now that have embroidery stores where they actually do embroidery and have forms. So we'll definitely ask that question on Facebook and see if anybody's willing to share that information with you. Carrie White, welcome. She says, tell me what is the model number of the embroidery machine behind you that has the name Blessing on it? Also, how many needles is that machine? This one is six needles. And this is the PR655 Entrepreneur. It is a brother embroidery machine. And then right beside it, actually, I can't see if y'all can see. Okay. And then right beside it is the red line. And it is 15 needles. And the red line is in the red line is industrial. And this one is more of a home commercial machine. So this one cranks out orders, no sweat whatsoever. And Blessing cranks out orders too, but it's six needles instead of the 15. What's everyone's opinion on the Racoma embroidery machines? Kim's Crafty Creations asks. So you guys can weigh in on that. Joy says she's looking into the Avance 1501. Bickup says, you probably forgot that I told you one of them to get her finger stabbed through by my happy. It kept on saying, no, I did not forget that. <laughs> it's hard to forget that because when you told me I was looking at the machine, it was like, oh, Jesus, I don't know why she was even that close to all of them heads. But no, I do remember that. Miss 143, I am so sorry to hear that um, and sorry for not getting to that message sooner. First of all, welcome, despite that. And thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member as well. Want to definitely point that out. Um, and I am offering condolences to the loss in your family. Um, 
Gail Whitaker, thank you for telling me Tender Touch and Miss American Eagle Embroidery and Graphics. Thank you for saying, all oh, y'all do Tender Touch. That's what's up. Thank you. Miss 143, it, it's hard. It, no matter who it is, it's definitely hard. So our sincere condolences. We are here for you, hun. And trying to, we try and keep you upbeat and thinking good thoughts, okay? Sherry, hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us. See, Joy says it's her therapy too. Now, you know what? Let's ask that question really quick um, because I haven't asked it in a while. But you guys, for those that are in here, has embroidery proven to be therapy for you? Has embroidery proven to be therapy? Because there's some folks going through some stuff right now. And because embroidery was more of a business it has not proven to be as strong therapy as they probably would like for it to have been so that's my question i mean and especially with me having the bigger machines and doing more orders and stuff the doing the orders isn't necessarily the therapy as it is doing my own projects is the therapy but just look just a question throwing it out there um I would like to know. Kathleen Shannon, you're welcome. Kimberly Joyner, you did catch us live. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Karen White, you're welcome. Uh, Nora22000, hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> welcome. Uh, Iris Diaz, PJ Coffins. Hey, PJ Coffins, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Marge Campbell, my thoughts on industrial embroidery machines is that they all have many of the same features, which is true. That is actually uncanny, but you're absolutely correct because a lot of them are based on the same frame, the same unit. They just change a couple of things and change the doodads on the front to make it look different than the other. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants their own footprint, which they should because they're selling them all differently. Um, but the industrial... As long as you're sticking with the industrial brand, you you should be okay with your embroidery machine. I would definitely look for great support from the company. Um, no huge pressure from the company because, I mean, you have so many options out there. Do your research. Get the best deal. Do your research, okay? Because I know there's there's options. There's other options out there. So definitely do your research um, and see what works the best for you. Make sure that uh, whenever you do get your deal, most of the companies give you the hat driver, cap driver, so that you can do hats. Most of them come with extra hoops, two sets of hoops. Um, so check that. Make sure that you, you're getting you know, your, your stand. A lot of them come with the stand. Um... And some of them come with supplies, like thread and stuff like that. So ask about what all it comes with. Shop around. So there's Barrel Dan, I think is the name of the company. There's uh, Happy, which is Tex-Mac. Um, there's also Tajima. There's also something Meister. I can't think of the name of them right now. But there's also a Meister company. Definitely Red Line. Love them. Um, Melco is a horse of a different color. It is industrial, but Melco, out of all the other embroidery machines, that one is completely different than use most of the rest. So, but check them out too. They have good deals as well. So there are several industrial companies out there that you can look into. Um, these guys, Redline has been for me, the better financial deal in comparison to the things that I was able to get with the machine. Black Unicorn, hello, welcome. Rita Young, welcome. It is therapy for all of you. That is what's up because I'm just, Stampin' Sue creates most definitely therapy in many ways. <laughs> Demi Kid said no. <laughs> but look at all the, <laughs> look at all the embroidery you do and I can hear you saying no. That's what's killing me. Um, but look at all the embroidery you do. So I can understand that. Um, Kimberly Joyner says, absolutely, especially during events of this year, I can understand. 
Mars, yes, embroidery and quilting are a way to take my mind off of things. Iris Diaz, yes, it has because you lost your husband in September. Yes, and that's, I mean, it's it's like it feels a void. It really does. I'm I'm not, I don't know. It just, it, it for me, it feels a void. Uh, Heather Butler, embroidery has helped me get through some stuff. I lose track of time when I'm working on my machines. Yes, Joanna, embroidery has proven to be therapy for me in the last four months since not working nine to five. I didn't think about that. Ray Fallow, welcome. Welcome from Alabama. Thank you for joining us this evening. And thank you for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Andrea Ross says, embroidery keeps me humble. I want to know how. <laughs> how does it keep you humble? Please let me know. Um, It's the learning process and the beautiful projects. PJ Coppage says, yes. I was intimidated with my first embroidery machine and had left it months before I went to YouTube videos to get used to how to use the machine. Heather says, yes. Yes, just for... Just being yo says yes, it has for me. Um, Michelle Rosencrantz, hi Eve. What does the red line go for that you have? Do they offer financing? They do offer financing. The um uh, red line I have, they have two one is a 12 needle, and this one is 15. Um, the 1501 was 79.95, pretty sure it was 79.95. Um, basic stuff not super extra stuff let's see if that hasn't changed um they have yes 15 needles starts at 79.95 the 12 needle starts at 6500 or 64.95 um so there's a couple of options there for the red line and you can go to redline 1501 dot com and there's a list of all the stuff that comes with that machine and I'll put it in the um do flashy down below hopefully let me see if you can click on no you could you can't hold on um I think that's right there we go Yes. Okay. So there's the link where you can actually click on it and go to it if you would like to. Um, embroidery puts me in a calming space. Dorothy Gaston says, yes, Nora, embroidery helps me to express myself. I don't have the big machine or lots of orders yet. So that might be why I get so much out of it. Mm, yeah, especially the lots of orders. Um, embroidery keeps me busy and I don't have to think about all the things that still have to be done. Therapy for me and making the extra money and knowing people want to pay me for what I am creating makes me feel good, Carmen says. I love it. That's what's up. The sewing bread. Yes, sewing and embroidery has been therapeutic for me, especially since the pandemic. This is now my full-time job. Congratulations on that. Contessa says it takes her to her happy place. <laughs> Michelle says it's been therapy for me after a long day at work. Yas. Um... Leslie Ram, you too get lost and concentrate so hard and stay busy while it stitches out. And Miss Bickham says crafting of any kind, but especially sewing and embroidery are very therapeutic for me. This room is also my secret closet. Some of you may know what that is. <laughs> Love it. Karen White, I'm still in the valley of decision as to which brand on a multi-needle I should purchase. Want to make sure I get the best bang for the buck. So yes. Definitely. Uh, Heather Butler says, Leslie Ram, most of the time I'm making gifts for people. So that also makes me feel good. Yes. It's better to give than to receive, right? Shirley Stewart says, I have a recoma and I'm not a fan. I have buyer's remorse. Oh, no. Um, You got a Meister, Meister, Meistergram? Meistergram. Thank you. You got to be kidding me, Miss Beckham. Thank you very much. I knew it was a cool name, but I couldn't. Because it reminds me of the doorbell, the Westminster doorbell thing, but I can never remember how to put that together. It's sad. <laughs> um, Iris Diaz, I look forward to these Sunday evening meetings, so to speak. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Latasha, is there much support with the red line? Um, the person who, yes, it is. The person who owns the company knows the ins and outs and have been doing embroidery for 30 years. And he also helped establish another well-known embroidery machine company. Um, and that company is selling machines now. And he helped them get up off the ground. So 
um, the red line is an excellent machine. Marge Campbell, do your research and check pricing and get the one you can afford. Awesome. Joanna says, my studio is also my prayer closet. While in prayer, I always think of someone I can bless with a small project. That's awfully very nice. That is very nice. Kimberly Joyner says, I'm waiting for my business to increase so I can justify getting a multi needle machine. Can't wait. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> be careful what you wish for. Olivia, yes, makes me realize I can better myself and make some people happy. Yas, yas, yas. Yas, I just exchanged my baby lot flourish, flourish for the Brother Stellaire. It digitizes and I get very excited when I'm embroidering my grandkids' art. Yes, it is therapeutic. I bet that is cute. Digitize the baby's artwork. That's what's up. Valley Girl for Life. Hello. Welcome from Tallahassee, Florida. Welcome. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you for joining us this evening. Gail says, embroidery is a hobby. Obituary programs brings an extra income for me. Only cried twice while doing them. I can only imagine. Um, empathetic as well. So that would be difficult for me. Debbie D, welcome. Hey, Debbie D. <laughs> and thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. I really appreciate it. Um, how about that Brother PR1050X? Is it special somehow? Or is that just extra marketing? Um, Miss Nora, I, a lot of these embroidery machines, I like to compare to cars in a way, because you have cars, all of them drive, um, pretty much the same way for the most part. You put in gas and you get in the car and you turn the steering wheel and you turn the signal and windshield wipers. It's just each car looks different on the outside. And each car has different things added to them. Like some cars are the uh, luxury edition. So they may have more soundproofing and bigger tires or whatever the case may be. And then some cars are smaller and they have less doodads and doohickeys on the inside. So you have to understand that sometimes, like for instance, uh, one of my favorite comparisons is like, Toyota and Lexus because Toyota a Lexus is a Toyota if you open the hood of the Lexus generally it says Toyota on the engine because it's the same car it's just extra stuff and extra marketing to make you want to buy luxury and um not necessarily the better deal but is a stigma a, a, a clout that comes with getting certain name brands on equipment so for me, I don't necessarily look at name brands because you kind of get caught up in that hype and um, sometimes the hype is not what it's cracked up to be. I'm not saying that about that particular machine, but just do your research. Do, do your due diligence, do your research and go with what makes you feel comfortable. Go with what makes you feel comfortable because it can be intimidating to go industrial. It can. But if you are trying to build a business where you're wanting to do quantity and large orders, then you really should be looking industrial more so than the home commercial machines. Um, there is a difference. Um, usually the home commercial embroidery multi-needle machines usually with those if something were to happen to the machine if it goes down if it acts up you have to take the machine in to get it serviced drop it off and let it be there for a week or however long it is and if your dealer um, service person is a couple of hours away you got to take it and drop it off a couple of hours away and let it sit there till you can go back and pick it up with the industrial machines, however, they understand that time is money. You don't have time to wait on your equipment to be in the shop. Oh, hold up. Let's back up a little bit too. Something else just came to mind. Usually while your machine is in the shop, when you go to drop your equipment off at the shop, a lot of times they're like, so by the way, this machine, yeah, well, you're bringing it in to fix it, but this is the older model. We have this brand new super shiny model right here. Why don't you buy this and, and they're talking you into upgrades 
It's a sales tactic. It's a great sales tactic because I know it works. I've seen it work. But eh, come on, bro. So at any rate, going back to industrial, if it breaks down, they already usually have video tutorials, um, some form of instruction to show you how to repair the machine because they know you don't have that extra time to wait. You got orders that need to go out. I can't afford to have my machine down. So that's the biggest different, the biggest perk for me with industrial over the home name brand stuff because you know, when you take it in, you've already spent thousands on this equipment. So when you take it in, you got to pay hundreds more to get it serviced and all that jazz. Whereas over here, they're walking me through how to fix it myself and I'm not paying hundreds to get it fixed. And usually when things do go south, it's usually something you can fix. It's not super difficult to do. Yes, it requires some form of technical knowledge and skill to be able to follow a video to instructions and all that jazz. But it, for a business owner, it makes sense. If you are just a hobbyist or somebody at home and you don't have that kind of technical knowledge, then it, it won't matter either way because you actually can have someone come to the house and repair your machine for you. Um, if you want to like happy, I know they have a technician who will go to wherever your machine is and come fix it. So it's, you know, it's just, a, it just depends. It depends on what you want to do, but definitely Nora, look at all of your options. Look at all of your options. Um, I love both of my machines, both of them. Like, as a matter of fact, I was having issues with one machine and the, the 15 needle, I was having issues because I hadn't done a calibration recently and I need to do that. Um, so in that quick pinch, I had to switch to six needle and it beautiful, flawless, flawless embroidery. Never really an issue out of the six needle. Um, so you, you kind of have to make a decision on which route you want to take, but it's entirely up to you. Sorry, y'all. I'm just talking. I got on a soapbox a little bit. Um... It's therapy evening, even when doing orders, takes my mind off the daily stress of living, Shirley Stewart says. That's what's up. Laura's Lace Fabrics, yes. I am very happy with the red line. Very happy with my red line. It is an awesome. That's grateful. Even though I don't have her name on there yet, I need to put her name on there, but that's grateful. And the other is blessing. Because <laughs> I'm telling y'all, the therapy from both of them is insane. So, yes, I love them. Maria says, I've lost my mojo, oh no, over the past two months and haven't been able to focus and get any sewing or embroidery done. And that's how, that happens. So I'm hoping this doesn't turn into like, you know, this is our quiet hour therapy session with Eve and the baby's booty. So, you know, I'm not trying to go there, but in addition to embroidery and sewing being therapy, there are times, especially if you're doing this for a business, where you will need to step back and take a break. As many of you guys know here that I deal with depression and anxiety, um, panic disorder, actually, anxiety, along with some other stuff in the background. But at any rate, one of the things that I have to do is I have to step back and shut the doors at some point. Um, like I'll be here, I'm interactive, I'm good, I'm in the group, I'm around, and then sometimes it'll be a few days and you may not hear from me. A lot of that is because I have to take that mental break. I have to recharge and get things together because it can get overwhelming sometimes when you're in here working or if there's an order that comes through and it just, it messes up and you just can't get it right. You kind of have to take a step back and say, okay. I need to take a break. I need to walk away. And then when I come back, oh, that's all I had to do and then get it done. It just depends. So don't ever beat yourself up for or feel bad for losing a mojo, so to speak, because when it comes back, it'll come back when you need it to and you'll be good. You know, just keep on going and riding that bicycle and you'll be okay. And a lot of times it takes a, a jump kick. That's why the project I wanted to do with you guys tonight wasn't applique. I know we talked about applique, but the one I wanted to do tonight was one that I thought was just super cute. So easy to do. It's very, very easy to do. 
and I wanted to share it with you guys and try and stitch one out while we're here um, and show you how simple it is. And it will go with a lot of what you guys are already getting yourselves geared up for because this season, um, there's a lot of people ordering gifts. There's a lot of folks that reach out to family. And then because we don't, well, for those of us who are still under COVID restrictions, I know for myself, I still restrict my interaction with folks on the outside because, it, you know, it is a little disconcerting for me personally. But at any rate, um, this is actually a really cool project. And on top of that, it's on sale this weekend. So that's why I was like, oh, I need to show this to you guys so that you guys can go out and get those designs that you could use in your projects. It's really easy. It's really, really, really easy. I mean, applique can be easy as well, but this one was just like, wow, this could be quick. So let me know, would you prefer applique, even though we have about an hour left, but would you prefer applique or this really cool project? <laughs> Super simple project, and it'll be helpful for you guys, I think. Um, you're welcome, Michelle. No worries. Shirley Stewart says she's been having issues. You have the tin needle. Don't know how the industrial machine performs. That is an industrial machine, that company. All of their machines are industrial. Uh, so, so creative, very therapeutic for me. I don't sell things yet. Have gifted several items to family and friends. Eddie Jr. embroidery must be therapeutic because I like the sound of my machine stitching out. I do too. Uh, and it's cool because when you get so used to hearing the sound of your machine, you can be sitting here doing something entirely different. That machine is running behind me. And I swear I hear it every time that bobbin runs out before the machine even stops. I'm like, oh, that's the bobbin. Because <laughs> you can hear the change in pitch of the embroidery is just so cool. Um, all right. So melanated, I'm new to your channel. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, I sew a lot, but my son gave me his old embroidery machine. I'm excited to start learning. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And we are here to, um, help you learn as well. They, whoops. Do you digitize your own designs or do you buy pay for them? It depends. Um, I do digitize. But if it's overly complicated or if I'm super busy and don't have time, I do have someone that I send my embroidery projects to to digitize for me if I need them done. And I'd say out of all of my embroidery projects, I digitize maybe for myself, I digitize right at about 100% of my designs. But for my customers, I digitize, I let them digitize. So I'll send out about 80% of my customers' project only because I want it done. I want it over and done with. I want it the most efficient, whereas my own personal projects, I'm not super worried about it. If I mess up, it's me. But I prefer it be done professionally for my customers. So it just depends. But for the most part, my own designs, I digitize them myself. Um, Lucy says, which do you recommend, Redline, Melco, or Recoma? Um, what I am going to say is, out of the three, the better financial value for myself and the better financial value, I think, all the way around is the Redline because the price point is just awesome for the amount of machine that you get, the needles, the hoops, the stand, you get... When that crate arrives at your house, it's ready to embroider with the three bobbins and everything. So I would say red line, but you know, you have to do the research, do the research, please do your research and figure out which works the best for you. But they, all three are decent machines. I know people who own all three. I know people who own all three and are super happy and super satisfied with their machines. Um, and I'm in the group for the red line, of course. And I've only seen one person in that group who is just like having the trying times with her machine. Um, not sure what was going on with that, but um, everybody else don't doesn't post that they're having issues with their machine like that in the red line group. Um, now in the other groups, I've seen people complaining about their machine. Well, I'm not in a mail code group, so I can't say on that one, but I am in another major machine group 
and I've seen people complain. So it just it just depends. It just depends. Hey, Miss Pressure, how are you? Welcome. <laughs> the PR P Karen White, the PR 1050X is approximately ten thousand dollars. That would be correct. Um, so you have to understand when you do the research on these machines, pay attention to what you're paying for. So just pay attention, pay attention. But all embroidery machines, for the most part, have the ability to be excellent machines. I'll say that. Valley Girl for Life. What is the best digitizing software for a beginner? I have a Janome Memory Craft 400E. Um, Valley Girl for Life. It depends on what what uh <laughs> what level you're trying to get at. If you're trying to get to the point where you're like deep into digital. Okay, so let me put it this way. There's a beginner program called Will Come Hatch. It's a thousand dollars, and you're digitizing from scratch yourself. And you really need to be taking a, a series of classes to get to be an expert on that. But um, there's also a digitizing program called Soul Art. Soul Art is a sister program to Soul What Pro. Soul What Pro is not a digitizing program. It's an editing program. So if you're wanting to digitize your own images, you need Soul Art. Soul Art is $75. Soul What Pro is $65. Um, if you go to my website down here, I have the trial versions of both on my website. So you can download Soul Art and give it a try and see if you like it. It's an excellent program for beginner beginners. Um, there needs to be some tweaking of it sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't digitize the best. But there is a channel here on YouTube, um, a fellow YouTuber, good friend, um, Clever Dog Designs here on YouTube, Clever Dog Designs. She teaches Soul Art. And she's excellent at so art. I've seen her crank out some stuff and I'm like, how, Why, how did you do that? But she knows the ins and outs, what to tweak, what to tell you to do and all that cool stuff. And she has videos showing how to do every bit of it. So so art is $75 and it's just like easy peasy mac and cheesy um, because it's an auto digitizer. So you may want to give that a shot. But like I said, it's on my website um, and it is the trial version. You have access to that. Um... Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let me do some designs. Let's see. My very first embroidery machine was a Viking Platinum. I was excited when I tried to work with it. It was a pain. Unfortunately, it was stuck. Yeah, sometimes we can get stuck. Help us get out of this funk and get back into the hoop group groove and get some projects completed. All right. Let us definitely doing that. Kimberly Joyner, yes, it was for so what pro and we have more classes coming soon outstanding analysis and other impactful information all right so um i'm going to okay super simple project let's do the super simple project so that you guys you're welcome lucy so that you guys can on a scale of one to five how hard is it to learn to digitize is it a real headache i'm going to say that it is difficult only because there's a lot you have to know and have to know what to uh, yeah how can i put it like for instance um some people know how to use adobe photoshop and they can take a simple picture and turn it into a beautiful work of art by adding backgrounds and this, that, and the third and all that jazz. I don't know how to do that. I'm not that technical, but I do know a little bit of how to use uh, Photoshop. Likewise, with digitizing, you can learn basic digitizing, um, like auto digitizing. All software, digitizing software programs have auto digitizing, but the more advanced programs, you actually lay stitches yourself. Learning how to do that properly is an art. And there's a lot of rules that you really want to keep in mind to make sure that your digitizing is efficient and you're not you're not wasting 
Okay, let's get into our project. And the reason why I'm switching and saying let's get into our project is because this project is a prime example of knowing how to digitize. Knowing how to digitize. All right. So give me a sec. I'm going to pull up one of my favorite embroidery design websites and show this to you guys so that you can see what project I'm talking about. All right. So, whoops, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Hold on. There we go. Um. Mm -mm -mm. Let me make sure this is right. Nope, that's not right. Uh, let me find it, you guys. I'm sorry. Uh, display caption? Hold on. Okay. So, what I want to do is this one. Let's check this out. Okay. There we go. Um, and now, sorry, once I switched computers, it makes it difficult to show y'all what I'm dealing with. Okay. Is it? Nope. I forgot to try this before I got y'all in here. I'm sorry. Hold on. I apologize. The suspense is killing me. Um, there we go. Oh, man. Y'all. I love it. Y'all. Okay. Okay, so here is my favorite embroidery design website. One of them, the top one actually. Well, there's two neck and neck, but at any rate. So here is my uh, website. And if you notice right up here at the top, they're talking about a cardstock encore. So this weekend for a dollar and thirty nine cents, you can do the project that I'm about to show you because all of these designs are um, on sale. But there's more than just these. So I already have, um, I already have my own designs. Like here are some new ones. I don't have these. But they have more like this. This is one. This is one. I don't have these either. But they're cardstock designs. So to make a greeting card, as you see right here. And it's so simple to do. And their, their project, the project is, is how can I, I mean, I'm saying it's just, it's so simple that even with a four, I would prefer to do it with the four by four machine than the multi needle. So if you've never done a greeting card before, that's what we're going to work on today. Um, I'm going to show you or tonight. I'm going to show you um, which one I have that we're going to work on. But like I said, all of them are on sale. Um, and the one that I wanted to do is this one here. So let me switch you back over. This is the one I want to do <laughs> because I have several friends that I have not seen in months and I missed them. So I was going to make that card and send it to them and show you that process today. And the other reason why I picked that one is because it's two colors. <laughs> and I don't have to worry about switching up a bunch of colors and stuff like that and trying to program colors and all that jazz. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So now that I've pointed that out and let you know, again, you have the option of going now this weekend. So today is October the 25th. 
Um, let me look again at when does this sale end? This sale ends tonight at midnight central time. So tonight, just before 11.59 p.m. central time, those designs are on sale. Okay. So if you want them, that's the reason why I was like, okay, we really need to jump on this particular project because they're not going to be on sale next week. They're on sale right now this weekend just so happens to be. So I thought it was good timing to go ahead and let you guys get in on that. Okay. So check them out. Um, my girls are yelling, uh, Eve strikes again. Uh-oh. <laughs> what do they mean? Um, yeah, this, well, Miss Bickham, this particular sale is not their regular sale. That sale is a special sale. Um, that one there. So that's why it ends tonight at midnight instead of normally their sale runs Tuesday to Tuesday. But this one is a special sale. Yeah, yeah, because I got the email and I was like, oh man, this is perfect timing because I wanted to do this project with the captains, but I ended up doing a live with the captains instead of doing that project. So it worked out for me, but I still wanted to do this project. So let's go ahead and get started on doing that because I thought it was just totally, totally, totally awesome um, being able to do a card. And the cool thing is some of their cards is four by four friendly as well. Okay. Before we get started, I had to go to Walmart. Oh, actually, hold up before I tell you about this part. So going back to digitizing and whether it's hard to digitize and stuff like that, just like this project that we're going to do today, it had to be digitized a certain way for it to work with cardstock. You can't just digitize anything on cardstock. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going to put this design. Mm -mm. It'll tear up the cardstock. Um, it'll look tragic. Your stuff won't do right. Yada, yada, the whole thing. So you really have to know digitizing in order to make sure that whatever fabric, whatever clothing piece, hats are not digitizing. Hats is not the same as digitizing shirts for the most part. There are some differences. Um, digitizing for leather is not the same as digitizing for cotton. The back of a jean jacket can take more abuse and can take more stitches rather than the back of a t-shirt. You see what I'm saying? So Digitizing, it, it, you have to be in tune not only with putting the design together, but you have to know what design works with what fabric, and you have to know what your what how the design is going to stitch out. Okay, so that's all of that is super important in digitizing. So it's not just a matter of click, click, click. Hey, I've got me a design and I've digitized. Okay, well, what can you stitch it on? You know, so it has to be done a certain way. These designs are specific specifically created to go onto cardstock without tearing up the cardstock, okay? Now, back to what I was getting ready to say. I went to Walmart because as I read back over the instructions on creating these cards, one of the suggestions that it offers is not using cardstock, but using watercolor paper. So I ran to Walmart and got some watercolor paper. I think this was like six bucks for this pad of watercolor paper. And the reason why they suggest watercolor paper instead of cardstock is because to a certain degree, it's more sturdy and the fibers of the paper are more longer, I guess. It's not more longer. The, the fibers are longer and that makes it better a better choice for embroidering on. You can embroider on cardstock you will be able to see the needle holes a little bit better on cardstock than you will watercolor paper or um, if you make your own paper. Like some people know how to make their own paper. I don't, I mean, I know how to do it, but I, I don't make it. So I went and got watercolor paper instead of cardstock, but because I have a whole thing of cardstock, but I said, I'm going to try this first. And then I went and got some invitation envelopes so that whatever card I make will fit in an envelope and I don't have to 
have envelopes made. So, or you can make your own envelopes. There is a way to do that, but that's not embroidery related. Related, that's a whole nother project. <laughs> so at any rate, this is the project we were going to work on, and I was going to make a card. Um, so you start out, as I mentioned, with your watercolor paper or your card stock and you decide what size you want it to be, but it definitely needs to be big enough to fit the embroidery design. So um, I'm not going to be able to see right away the um, chat, please. So don't be too frustrated if I don't get right back to you and you're asking a question, I'll try and keep an eye out on that. Um, Let me go back and look at this. One, six, eight, five, four, eight. There it is. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to get my design switched over. And then we're going to... So my socially distance hug design, it had two different size options. Um, one size option was four inches by 4.1 inches and the other was 5.44 inches by 5.85 inches. So I can do, um, I'm, I'd rather do the four by 409 size card. So that's what we're going to choose. Y'all, they have so many card options that are absolutely gorgeous. And you have to understand, even with it being social distance and COVID and folks not visiting and stuff like that, especially if there's an older person, especially for the older community, Folks like getting letters. Letters kind of went the way of the dodo bird for a while there. So it's cool sometimes to still get snail mail. Um, so what we're going to do is, um, let's see, five by seven won't fit these envelopes. So I need to do a little bit less than that. And y'all know that means math. So right now I'm going to make it the size of half a card only because I don't feel like doing math. Ain't that lazy? Y'all know how I am. We don't like math around here. Okay, so all I'm going to do for right now, only for the sake of time, my pad uh, watercolor paper was 9 by 12. So that means this is 9 by 6 since I folded it in half. Okay, and I'm going to do that only because I'm being lazy. All right. Oh, you want the link to it? I'm sorry. Do you know why my design won't import to the SE400? The second position keeps showing up blank. Mm, no, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, Without seeing it, I don't know why it would show up blank. If you, because there is a way to open up So What Pro and look at, like, do a printout of the design and how it's going to wind up, be, how it's going to wind up on your paper, because that's what we're getting ready to do today. Um, so once you print, look at your print preview and see if it's showing up in each one. And if it's not, then there isn't anything in that second one. It may be in the third. Um, but without actually look, looking at your file and seeing it, I, I really can't decide di di or help explain that without seeing it. So unfortunately with that, I wouldn't be able to at the moment. Um, all right. So just drew blank. Okay. I need to print out this design. That's what I need to do. Okay. So let me go to downloads. There we go. I 
gonna drag you. No, 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 no. All right, so I'm what I'm going to do to help me line it up on the card is I'm gonna use So What Pro, and I probably should be showing y'all all of this. I don't know why I'm not thinking correctly on that. Um, window capture. Let's see. Let's see if this works for y'all. Okay, so I am, I know you can't see the second window, but I'm gonna bring over um, the design. And it's right here. All right, so here is the design. And this is what it looks like in Sew It Pro. And Sew It Pro is giving it a bunch of different colors. So I'm going to simplify it. Which one do I want to use? I think I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to simplify it and change these colors. Um, so him eyes is going to be black. All right, so I'm going to change that. I'm going to change this. And then the cat. So we're going to do that. Back. and his paw pads and stuff that's going to stay red that I'm going to make the same color red okay and then this his whiskers I'm going to make black all right because I want this as simple as it possibly can be to make our life easier and I'm going to save this as, and I'm going to turn this into an edit file so that I don't overwrite my original embroidery design, which you guys up here at the top is where I changed it to edit. And then now I'm going to do file and print preview, which is what I was mentioning um, earlier. So if you look at the print preview, here is what your design is going to look like as the file that's sent over to your computer. Uh, I'm sorry, your embroidery machine. So if there's something in that that's missing, you don't see something in there, then you want to go back and check again. Um, now, So It Pro lets you print out a print template, which is what this is on this page. You can cut along this and then use your crosshairs to get the center of your design. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment. Then you have your color list and then another page for extra color list. And here are your color stops. So So What Pro allows you to print all of this stuff out so that you have a breakdown of your embroidery designs and you know what you're getting ready to um, do with your project. So if you need to have a quick reference of your projects without booting up your computer or whatever, you can actually print this out and make a portfolio of your designs is what I was trying to get around to saying. So it, it actually can be done. Let me stop that and find the printer. And I think this is the printer. Let's see. I hope that was the printer anyway. I can't never tell. I've been having um, printer issues lately. Oh, you know what? Let me cancel that because I forgot to tell it. Only do the first page. So that's a no. Um, here's the other. I'm glad this is a simple project so I can make sure that this gets done. All right, so now let's go to print. Pages one to one. There we go. 
Watch me not have paper in the printer. It should be paper now. There we go. Yes. All right. So let's go back. We've printed out our design. And while I pull this up, I'm going to um, check this out. And actually, let me put that link there for you because I saw somebody asking about the link for the website. Let me go ahead and take this and do this and do this and do this. Oh, it did it for me. Yas. Okay. okay, that's the link to the website. Um, silhouette. I'm confused as to what a wear silhouette pro. So what pro? Okay, hold on. If you're looking, Kimberly Laws, it's uh, www. Um, all right, there you go, Miss um, Kimberly Laws. I think that'll that's a clickable link. I think it doesn't look like this. Okay. So here we have our printout. It's very light. It's hard to see, but a lot of that is because the threads are super thin because we are going to, um, it, it's a thin design to stitch out. All right. But what me having this does is it allows me to position this on the front of this exactly where I want it to be so that I can mark the front of the card when it's time for me to stitch it, it'll I can line it up in the hoop, so to speak, because I'm actually going to be floating this, all right? So I'm going to cut this out, and I'm not going to cut it out all the way to the edge of the paper because the design is just right here. So I'm going to cut it out. Just where I need to see the design and the crosshairs because those crosshairs is the center of my design and that's what's most important for me anyway if you want to cut out the whole thing you can doesn't hurt anything to do it all right so how do you switch the color box of thread back to the stitch count to back you have to select a color stock in order to do that so you have to actually click on either like in my list, number one was red. You got to click on number one in that list on the right hand side. And then the bottom will turn to your thread colors. So now that I have it cut out, I'm going to line this up where I want it to be on the card. Like I could put it up here at the top and then write my own message down at the bottom, maybe. Or I could have it centered if I want it to. It's entirely up to you. But the cool thing is by having this template, it lets you see exactly how big this is going to stitch out and lets you line it up properly. Okay. So this is what you would use the print template for. You don't always have to have that. You're welcome, Charlene. You don't always have to have that, but it does help. Okay. So what I do is, hey, Nakomi, once I get it lined up where I want it to be, then I am going to take a pencil and very lightly mark each edge of my crosshairs with a dot, okay? So I'm gonna put a little mark here, a little mark here, a little mark here, and then a little mark down here. And the reason why you want it to be light is because when we stitch this out, we want to be able to erase those crosshairs. We don't want the crosshairs to be back behind our design, okay? What do you think that design would look like if you use Glitter HTV as if it were an applique? It should tear easily since it's a running. You you could. I don't see why you couldn't. Um, but because it's open, the cat is an open design. Like the heart, yes, because the heart is closed. But the cat is open down here at the bottom. So 
you would have to know to cut straight across, I guess. Um, but yes, I don't see why that would be an issue. So now that I have my crosshairs, what I'm going to do now is take a ruler and connect my crosshairs, okay? So what that will do is give me a guide to use for my um, hoop. And then that way I can line up the machine on the hoop. So I'm going to use my ruler to connect these crosshairs very lightly now don't go crazy pushing down on your your pencil so i'm like barely touching and then do the opposite side the opposite crosshair and all this does is help you keep it lined up exactly where you want it to be because now when i put this on my hoop I know where my center point is, and that's crucial for using it on your machine. And then you also can line up side to side and make sure that everything lines up the way it's supposed to be, okay? So I have my um, design. I have my card. I need to put the design over on the machine. So I'm going to use my flash drive and I'm going to use this machine because it's slower than the industrial machine and I don't want to pound on that cardstock for right now so this is the machine we're going to use and uh, and this is, I'm going to use, because they want you to use, um, actually they don't want you to use sticky stabilizer. Hold on. I was going to use my, um, well, I still can. So they want you to use a cutaway stabilizer when doing this project. So let me grab this uh, design and put it on my flash drive. And put it in there. Yas. And where to download? I'm going to drag you over to the hard drive. All right, so I have the design on my hard drive so that I can put it on the machine. And now I'm going to look at this. Okay, so let's get our cutaway stabilizer and i'm going to actually poop my fast frame which may not be the better idea but that's what i'm going to use because i have it right here and i'm not going to use sticky stabilizer i'm going to use cutaway and i'm going to attach it to the frame now i don't have my other camera set up in here so i'm going to um turn well, it's a high food mess over there, so I'm not gonna turn the camera over there. So I'm gonna go get my, <laughs> I'm gonna go get my cutaway stabilizer, and we'll cut it over there so that y'all can see. I'll get a piece of it actually, and then we'll cut it and put it on the hoop. Get my clip so that you all can see all of this. Okay, so here is my cutaway, a piece of it anyways, and I got binder clips because I'm going to use that to attach my cutaway to my fast frame. I love fast frames. Fast frames are uber cool. Um, they make hooping really simple, and hopefully it won't make this 
a disaster project because they really want this stabilizer to be good and tight on the hoop. Okay. So all I'm doing is putting binder clips to hold this on. Actually, let me, let me go fold it out with this project. And then I'm gonna clip on the edge. And I'm going to cut this to fit. It's not exact science, but you wanna get, get this fit nice and tight. All right, and so I'm going to clip here. Hi, Nakomi. We are doing a greeting card, actually. Embroidery card. Um, yeah, it's on, Heather, it is on Embroidery Library. When you go to the search button, type in cardstock at the top. If you type in cardstock, it'll pull up every design they have on cardstock. Now, the design that I'm using that I already have is not in a part of the sale because it's not the the sale is on the holiday items. Oh, thank you. Is on the holiday items. Um, but here is our. This is my. Uh, you startled me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Um, my stabilizer, cutaway stabilizer. I have my cutaway stabilizer. It's here. And what we're going to do now is put it on the machine. And since he brought the tripod, I don't know that it'll reach, but we're going to try and let the camera reach. But meanwhile, what I'm going to do at this point, here is my um, card and my design, as you see. It's going to fit in my frame this way. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's going to fit in my frame like this. So I'm going to put it sideways. All right. And so the front of the card is going to lay on top of this hoop, just like that. Because this is the front of the card. And this is where I want the embroidery to be. Okay. So I'm going to turn it this way. I'm going to have to flip my embroidery to make sure that it goes the right way so that my card's not upside down. But this is how we're going to put it on. And what we want to do is spray spray adhesive on the back of this so that it, it holds tight to the hoop or holds tight to the stabilizer, rather, just like so. Okay? So let me get my sticky, my spray adhesive. I use... So there's a couple of options. I use, not this one, Ooh, wrong one. I have this, this is an older spray adhesive and it's embroidery, machine embroidery spray. And the reason why this is, it's for machine and hand quilting. You definitely wanna make sure that whatever spray adhesive you use is embroidery or needle friendly, okay? And then the other option you have, I believe this is it. Hold on. No, this is 404. We have, um, there's a 505 with the top is blue. And I don't have any in here with me. They're in my um, storage room. So this is the blue cap. 505 is for needles where you can use it on the sewing machine. So it's the same brand, but it's not 404, it's 505 spray, okay? So I'm going to have to use this one because I don't have the 505 in here with me, okay? And so what you want to do is spray just this side. Don't spray the whole card because then your card will stick together when it goes shut. What did you call my type of hoop? It is called a fast frame. It is a fast frame. So to protect this side of the card, I'm gonna use this other piece of stabilizer to cover it so that when I spray this, it won't spray that side. Only the front where my crosshairs are, the back side of that will get sprayed, okay? So I'm gonna spray that. Don't take a lot, just a little spritz, somewhat. Ooh, that stuff is loud, the smell of it, okay? 
So now that I have my card, I have my crosshairs, and I know where it's going to go, I'm going to, let me see if you guys have a thing on your notes. You don't. I'm going to try and get y'all as close as I can over here to the machine so that you can see what we're doing on the machine. So hopefully I can get y'all set up just like so. Let me see what I'm looking at. Kind of close. Let me see if I can get you higher. There we go. Come on. Okay. A little bit higher so that you can see. Okay. A little bit better. A little bit better. Let's get you. I can't get too close because my cord isn't super long. So let me see if I can pull you in just a little bit more. Boom! Just like so. All right. Now, so I have my fast frame. Okay, there's a Durky version, and this one is just a regular fast frames version. It's an adapter. All right, so I'm going to put this back on. Now, I can't see the chat over here, so if uh, something needs to be brought to my attention, it's going to have to wait a minute. And then I'm going to put this on my machine and screw it down. It's that simple. All right, and now I'm going to get my card. And like I said, this is the front, so I'm going to put it on here. It was small enough where I could flap them down and get it out of the way. Okay. All right, so that's in the center. And what I'm going to do, because I flapped those brackets over, normally what I would use is my... Um, to attach stabilizer, I use these clips so that the binder little squeezy handles aren't in the way. But because I know this is smaller than those, I'm going to go ahead and put the design on the machine, but I'm also going to double check and make sure that it's not going to hit those uh, clips because I don't want to break a needle. Now, the other thing you need to know about doing these cards is they recommend using the smallest needle you can, sewing um, needle. So the 7511 is the better option to use for this project. Now, I'm going to let you know ahead of time, I'm lazy and I don't have 7511 needles in here. So you might be able to see my holes a little bit better because I don't want to take time to change the needle. But that's okay. Change your needle so that yours will look good. All right. So let me grab the design and bring it over. Yes, this is rhinestones. Yes, this is bling. All right. So let us load our design. And there she blows. All right, and now it's there. I need to rotate it. My card is going this way, so I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And fortunately, this particular <clears throat> machine has laser guide, whatnot, and that's phenomenal. I absolutely love it. So I'm going to move it dead center of that dot to help me make sure I'm not too close to either edge for those binder clips. I definitely want to be sure of that. So while I do that, I'm also going to check and make sure by going along that line that I'm centered. And this allows me to check and make sure everything is lined up just so, actually. How close am I to those clips? Oh, good. I am super far away. Holler. All right. Now I'm going to check this side. So I'm really close to the edge of that. So I'm going to double check that. Okay, far enough away there. And I'm going to go 
here and see where that clip is. Okay, that clip is really close, so I'm going to flip this back over because I don't want to take the risk of hitting that. All right. And up and down is pretty darn close. So we're going to start stitching. Now that I know I'm not going to hit the edge of this frame, um, and I know that it's dead center, we're going to go ahead and get the stitching. So let's close this out. And I'm going to uh, set my thread colors. So what I'm going to do is switch this to red. Mm, three. And then switch that to black. So number two, we're going to switch to number five. All right, so it's going to stitch my thread color number three, which is red, and then my thread color number five, which is black. And let's go and sit there and watch it. catching the bobbin. Hold on. And I'm sitting here watching it not catch the bobbin. So let me grab, reach under here. And that's why I like to stay over the top of my project until it gets going a good ways. And then I can make sure this machine has a bad problem with not catching the bobbin. I don't know why it does this sometimes. So um that's one of one of the actually biggest complaints i have out of everything for the most part the rest of it is just fine all right now let me check my bobbin and make sure that the tail is out where it needs to be and i'm holding this card i you should Technically, with that spray adhesive, you shouldn't have to, but I'm holding it just in case because I don't want to. Um, I don't want it to move at all. Actually, even though now that it did this part, it shouldn't move. But come on, bro. All right. All his nose and I should be able to let it go at this point because it's held up up there and down here and it's cut away so I shouldn't have to hold it anymore And you probably could benefit from slowing the machine down as well. I have it at 700 stitches a minute. But, you know, again, that's up to you if you so choose to do so. Oh, his little paw pads are super cute. Oh, my God. She is going to love this card. And now we're getting ready to stitch the cat, and then I'm gonna go check the chat. Now, fast frames tend to bounce, that's the other reason I'm holding this. Um, you can put a weight on here, but I don't like to do that because I don't want to cause any damage to the embroidery arm. But...
Look at this. It's not catching the bottom again. Like I said, that this is the part that's annoying with just only this one does that. Other machines don't. And I don't know why it does that. It catch it's like it if it doesn't like the length of tail that's cut on some designs and so it won't catch the bobbin. Now this is one part on this machine that these machines don't have. This has the auto threader. The industrials do not, but that I didn't care. Um because sometimes it's just as fast for me to thread it. So cute already. Come on, catch. Nah. Seen it. And 
this a trip because I know someone else with a six needle and theirs does the same thing. After it trims thread, it doesn't catch. I don't know what that what the deal is with that. But at any rate. And it's probably going to have to stop after every one of these letters. So with it doing that, I don't know how many times I'm going to have to re-thread. So this part can get tedious <laughs> and I'm gonna try and link Yes, um, they suggest using a 7511 needle for this. I'm not using the 7511 needle because I was I'm lazy and didn't want to change the needle. But um, but they suggest 7511 so that you don't have such large holes in the in the card stock or the watercolor paper watercolor paper
One more minute, it says. <laughs> take that off and here's our card and we still see our crosshair so we got to erase that and let's bring you over y'all remind me i'm gonna have to give hubby a social distance high five for bringing the tripod he's awesome sauce for doing that all right and so now at this point what i'm gonna have to do is take it out of my hoop so all I have to do is take off these clips. Oh, running a little bit over, y'all. I'm sorry. I apologize. And then we pop this off. And there we have almost finished card okay so this is what it looks like on the front with the crosshairs that i haven't erased yet this is what the inside looks like really tragic and then of course we can write or use the cricket to write something on this side and then whatever on the back so what we do at this point is we cut around this you can actually cut the square of the card and what that'll do is when we when we put our second layer of card right here it won't leave the imprint of if you were to cut really close to it okay so i'm gonna cut as best as i can free-handed and without That's not exactly a neat cut. So, what I'm going to suggest to you is to cut close to the card when you have time. You actually probably could lay it on the cutting board and use your rotary cutter and a ruler to cut better than what I'm cutting now. But I'm cutting crazy now because I'm trying to get this done so that I won't hold y'all too much longer. All right. So, I cut out and now I have it. You can't see the stabilizer, right? So at this point, now what you do is you take, you can either use some kind of pretty graphic paper or whatever. Like if I had, let me see. Let me see if I have some red cardstock right here or something close to it. Uh, what color is this? Green, this green. so there's a couple of things you probably could do um i don't have very many options in the studio with me but like this is um vinyl that you would use on like wall cleans or or tumblers or something like that like sticker vinyl type situation if you had this in the right side, right size, you could apply it here. 
Um, another option is the exact same paper as what we made the card out of and do as if you're going to make another card. The only thing with doing this option is that it's really thick. So that's why I think they want you to use um, a thinner paper. So the same thing I just did, which took it and folded it in half but this time cut it in half and only use half of it. Only use half to lay, glue it to the inside so that it covers the stitches, okay? And you don't see the back of the, the stitches. But what they suggest is use, you know, a pretty paper on the inside. Like this cardstock is not quite as thick. But the only reason, like I don't, I don't have the cardstock, cardstock, so I couldn't um, do this. But I have like some green cardstock. And what I would do is cut it down to the size, and then use a thinner card stock let's let's cut this down because i don't want it to we want it to look good for you guys we want it to look good so i don't want it to be tragic so give me a second second I need to keep a permanent camera over here. All right. So maybe if I kept a permanent camera over there, I'd keep it cleaner. And then I know I'd be held accountable. <laughs> But here's the white piece of paper, and I just cut a green one down to size. So you could, you know, just glue this to the to the front inside, and that way they just stick it out. So I didn't cut it the right size, but you get the drift. So we'll cut it, and then you put your message on this side, or you could even put a message on the opposite side, and make your design. Here's some glue sticks get us some glue sticks. I'm going to use the white one because that green one was too big and I don't want it to look tragic. So we get us some glue. Probably need a thicker glue than a glue stick. I don't know. We'll see here in a sec. But make sure you get your edges pretty good so that it'll lay down like it's supposed to. Um, and then... That my glue. Thank God it dries clear because I got glue everywhere just now. All right. All right. All right. Nope, it ain't going to stick. So I'm probably going to have to hold it shut because there ain't enough glue. So I'm going to hold it shut for a little bit. But at any rate, that's how you do. That's how you do. Hey, Miss Deep Purple One, how are you? Hopefully, holding this down. I'm not a... You know what? Oh, it started. It started sticking. No, it didn't. Ah! Oh, my gosh. Ooh, I know what I'm going to use. My husband bought this. We finna use his spread, he said. He bought this from the hardware store. It's probably gonna stink though. We'll see. I wonder if this is gonna work. We finna to find oh it does stink. Oh my god. 
I'm about to let it air out before I send this to anybody. Should I be gonna send it to the post office? And they was like, who in the world is in that envelope? My bad. It's a card. <laughs> My bad. Oh, look, that worked great. Oh, man. We might have to steal this from the husband. All right, so here we have our card. Oops, and I just threw it across the room. Here we have our card. So I would use like a bone file, you know what I'm called, what I call they call that thing to put creases in paper. Let's see if I can get this pencil to do the same thing. To crease it really good and make sure that it stays shut. And of course we need to erase this um the lines which I don't have an eraser because for some reason all of my pencils I keep the erasers out of them I don't know why but at any rate so here's your card and like I said they have a whole ton of them a whole ton I mean like a lot of really cute options and if you have a Cricut or a silhouette with the writing the pen writing capability you could easily lay this on the Cricut and let the Cricut draw or write in whatever your message is on the inside or if you have great penmanship write in your own message and then find you an envelope and put it inside and go on about your business so it's a really cute project with embroidery that's outside the box it's not your common everyday embroidery project um but as you saw it didn't take much i mean it took a little bit longer for us because I was showing you step by step and, you know, trying to get everything lined up just so, but we started at 1030 and we're just now finishing up, you know, technically I was finished at 11. So this is a really fun project. Um, me personally, maybe it could be that machine. I'll try it on the other. I'm not a fan of this lettering, but, and how it's stitched out, but the other designs that they have out there the lettering and stuff is you know it's not lettering like this it's more of a design and flourishes and stuff and they're all really really pretty so i think those will stitch out a lot better than this specific one but i still love the design it's a really cute design and i think the recipient of this card is going to absolutely love it because she likes getting mail and um i like to send her little treats from time to time in the mail um i mean she's 90 I think so I like to keep in touch with her and send her really cute stuff and um, let her see some of the work that I do with the embroidery and whatnot and this it's not your everyday card you know so I think it'll be a really cute touch to send out and like I said if you haven't checked it out already embroidery library the link is in the description like Iris says yes you can make your own envelope especially if you have card stock it's not hard to do i would say check a youtube video on the instructions i can't instruct you right now because it's time for me to get off <laughs> but yes you could definitely make your own envelope and send it and i think it will turn out to be a super cute job to send to somebody so i enjoyed working with y'all with this one this was one that i've been wanting to do uh for quite some time now for those of you who follow the channel Frequently, you may see this project pop up as a completely separate video. We've already done the card, so it's not, you know, don't be super surprised. You can watch it again if you'd like. I'll probably do a different design for the next card, but we, I definitely wanted to get a video out on making this because I thought this was just like a super cute project to do. So I appreciate you guys joining me this evening. Thank you so much for your thoughts and your information on therapy and how embroidery and sewing has proven to be quite helpful because it really has, especially here. Um, and I can't emphasize that enough with the crafting. It does take you to, you know, places and because you're able to do something nice for other people that helps you in turn. It makes you feel good because you're doing something good uh, for someone else. So definitely keep that in mind as you hang out with us here at the baby's booty um on facebook as well as here on youtube and i look forward to seeing you guys next week i'm not sure where i will be whether i'll be here in the studio or whether i'll be out of town 
Um, either way, if I'm here in the studio, then we'll try and work on an applique project. If I'm out of town, I'll still see if we can't work on the applique project, but it may be a little more limited because the reception up there internet wise is not the best. Um, so we may have to forego, actually let's forego applique if I'm out of town. Um, but I'll keep you updated on that and uh, in the Facebook group and on the hoop group on our website, but main, especially the Facebook group uh, so that you guys will know where I am. All right. So thank you so much for joining me. I had a ball as always. And if you do a card, post it in the hoop group. We would love to see your work and see how you did your design and how you did the inside front of your card. Um, because they do have project instructions on their website for doing these cards. So check that out too, and you'll see how they did theirs. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys' projects. And congratulations to everyone who has uh, received new babies again. So thank you for that as well. So we appreciate you joining us this evening. I hope you have a great rest of your evening and the rest of this week. And be careful to those of you all who are in the path of the hurricane because that's coming this week. Please be careful. Love you all too. And I look forward to seeing you next week. All right. So thanks. And you guys have a great night. Sorry for going over time. My bad. <laughs> Bye.